AI and machine learning plays a big role in the WorkEra platform itself. Can you give us one to two case studies of how machine learning powers the WorkEra platform? Yes, 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 yes. And uh, it's going to get technical, but that's what we love. <laughs> it is. The um, audience loves that for sure. <laughs> um, so we, we build a company with uh, data AI in mind from the ground up. Um, so when you want to uh, measure someone, you first need to have sort of an ontology. We call that a skill ontology. Imagine a large graph where each node is a skill uh, and each skill is tied to a certain cognition. You know, a, a skill could be, hey, wh what is PCA? Tell me about it. And that's a recall level skill. It's a remember level skill. But you could also ask someone, uh, you know, can you extract uh, the principal components uh, of these data metrics. And that's an applied level skill. It's very different in terms of cognition. You can also put a data set in front of someone quite open-ended and ask them to analyze the situation, uh, you know, create something, synthesize information. That's also different cognitive complexities. And so you have a graph where skills are tied to cognitions. And uh, that's the work of psychometricians, uh, really, to establish that. Um, over the last three years at WorkKera, we have evaluated a lot of learners around the world at the skill level. And what I mean by skill is not machine learning is a skill like on LinkedIn. Uh, machine learning at WorkKera is tens, maybe hundreds of skills. It's broken right. down into subdomains, into topics, into individual skill. And so this graph is really massive and very rich. Um, so that's the first piece of technology. How do you build such a skill ontology? But then it gets interesting when you think about the, the, the data that was collected on this graph, uh, where you can start understanding the cross correlation between skills. Because if I know that you can do two times two equal four, I don't need to ask you, my mentee, two plus two. I can infer with 90% confidence, it's a conditional probability that you would be able to do uh, two plus two equal four. And so right. you take that concept and you expand it towards uh, to thousands of skills where we have now an engine that can uh, is a computer adaptive engine that can uh, ask a question in order to maximize information over the entire graph. And after... 10, 20, maybe 30 questions, we can already provide rich skills feedback across hundreds of skills uh, to the user so that they, they know better themselves. And this is a very important skill technology that we call skill inference. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. That's, that's only part of the that story because- Crystal clear. I got a quick question for you, which is that, is that graph, this, um, this skills graph um, ontology, so we talked about the nodes being, they could be recall skills, or they could be, uh, I can't remember the other kind that you described. Apply, like, synthesize, apply. create, so, analyze, yeah. So are the edges between nodes, are those manually curated or data-driven? Mm, it's a very, very good question. You have many ways to build those edges between nodes. You can, uh, if, you, if you think about it, uh, you can build it based on conditional probabilities. So let's say um, we have evaluated many people across two skills and we know which ones they have and which one they don't have. And so there is a, uh -huh. a, a, a correlation that we can uh, uh, make between uh, having a skill and having another skill. Right. Uh, certain skills are predictive of other skills uh, uh, or not predictive of other skills. Certain skills appear in someone's skill sets. Uh, there's a lot of cross correlation in there that can be used. On top of that, you can use natural language processing uh, in order to establish how close two skills may be. Uh, there's a lot of uh, information online that has been written by humans and that can be used to determine if skills are close to each other or not close. So, for example, right. if you look on Wikipedia, addition and subtraction are mentioned commonly around each other. Mm -hmm. And so inherently, those skills are going to be close to each other. Um, right. And you have also uh, the possibility to add a manual uh, tagging, uh, uh, and that's part of what we do at WorkKera as well. And all uh, there's a ton of different methods to build that graph. Awesome. That was a great answer. So yeah, so in short, you can use data to drive the graphs, but then you could also potentially override in some situations or add in manual tags in some certain situations. And that's that makes correct. a lot of sense to me because the skill ontology, the skill universe is constantly shifting. Things like addition and subtraction, those are going to be relatively stable, <laughs> uh, maybe for centuries. Um, but some other things, you know, things 
uh, new approaches come in. And so by doing, by building your graph in this data-driven way, it can automatically adapt. You don't need to be having huge teams of people looking out for new skills and figuring out how they should be slotted into your, the ontology manually. So it makes a lot of sense to me. For sure. For sure. Nice. Um, so that's really cool. Is that is that kind of the main way that machine learning is used in the work era platform, or is there anything else as well? That's only one of the ways. That's so that's what we call skill inference. Now, uh, let's assume you have a skill inference engine and you're very good at, at it. So you're very good at measuring people. There's also an entire part around psychometrics testing that I did not talk about, but uh, I can talk about now. The imagine you you're asking a question to someone. Uh, this could be a very good question, but it's usually a very bad question because it's very easy to write a quiz uh, and very hard to write uh, psychometrically sound assessments. Mm -hmm. So for example, when you answer a quiz on a course, usually it's more of an engagement feature more than an actual uh, assessment. So at right. Workera, we need to make sure that what we measure is what we were was intended to be measured. That's called validity. And there's a lot of statistics behind the scenes where you analyze the answers of thousands of people to understand how can we calibrate the difficulty of a given question, the discrimination rate of a given question, there's there any bias, are the distractors the right one, does this question give away the answer to another question. So there's a ton of statistics around that as well. And that's what we build in an automated fashion at Workera. So that's the second piece of technology. And there's two more. Um, where, where it gets really interesting is once you have uh, someone's skills profile on the ontology that we're talking about, so you have a user, you understand their skills across thousands of uh, nodes in the graph, then you can start really helping them. What does it mean to help them? It means you can start uh, recommending the right content to them, right. for example. And that's where uh, that's what we call a precision upskilling is our ability to understand the ocean of content and make it easy for our users to build the skills in an effective manner. Uh, and, and really what the user wants is not to take a 200 hour course if only 10 hour of the course is relevant to them. Yeah. Um, they want uh, research papers if they're proficient, but if they're beginners, they don't want research papers. So you have a lot of contextual information to use to build an effective recommender system. That's part of what we do. And that then it's ex is yeah. so cool. I love that. <laughs> I might have to try work era. This sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the other piece that uh, is very interesting is. Uh, is really, once you have that skills data, you can do a lot at the organization level. And this is usually what enterprises do. It can help you put people on the right projects. It can help you identify mentors internally or really promote people to be mentors for a group and match yeah. them with uh, actual mentees that have complementary skill sets to them. It can uh -huh. also be used in a hiring fashion, because when you start, when you understand your skills gap internally at the org level, uh, then you can start configuring the work era assessments for your hiring pipelines in order to make sure that when you hire a new uh, data professional, uh, they are bringing something new, they're meeting the rigor or the benchmarks that you have established internally. And so there is a ton of technology that goes in, in those, all those talent strategies that go beyond education and upskilling. So cool. That is awesome. So in addition to being a digital mentor, the platform can also use machine learning to facilitate real life mentors. Yeah. So it's, it's a mentor for the user, but it's also a mentor for the organization, if you will. 